Um, okay, so tonight I wanted to talk to you guys about time management. And I love seeing your guys' faces, but I want to talk to you guys about time management because if you can get started with time management in your business at the beginning, it's going to save you so much headache. Uh, I think one of the reasons that I was able to kind of wrap my head around time management at the beginning is because a lot of you guys know I was Janelle Summer's assistant at the beginning. So I saw how... I saw how everyone was so, um, how Janelle was so organized with her time and she was really good at, you know, just fitting it all in, you know, and being a mom, she has one kid and I watched her and I thought, okay, so if she's successful this way, then I have to figure out a way to be successful at it. And I had to figure out how to fit in working for her, her assistant, um, while going to school full time. Yes, I didn't have any children yet and I wasn't married yet. I didn't even know Kirk at the time, you guys. So crazy to think of that nine years ago, but I had to fit it around a lot of different stuff. So I know some of you guys, actually everyone on, you know, you have, um, you have children and you have spouses and you have, you know, things that you're trying to work around full-time jobs and it can be tough, you guys, but you have to make this business a priority. All of you guys probably at this point have seen my income progression and it's one of those things that I don't like to share, but I want you guys to also know what's possible when you make this business a priority. And the way to make it a priority is to plan for it, you guys. I know it's like that cliche quote where we've all heard where it's like, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, you know? Like, it's true, though, in this business, you guys. If you're kind of just flying by the seat of your pants and saying, like, oh, I'll figure out when I can work when I have a free moment, that free moment never pops up, okay? Like, it's like life will always be full of stuff, you guys. And I've seen that through so many different seasons of life and one of the most challenging was becoming a mom and having to figure out how to fit this schedule around someone who is controlling my schedule, right? Like our children control our schedules completely. Um, so I wanted to give you guys just quick tangible things that you can start applying immediately, okay? So the first one, you guys, is that you have to keep things simple. I've heard from so many coaches that are like, so what, so what do I have to do to be successful? And we literally lay it out for you every single day, you guys, the four vital behaviors. You're going to hear me talk about this till I'm blue in the face. And you're going to be like, does she have anything else that like actually makes her successful? No, you guys, if you talk to any successful coach and I was the same way, you guys, like I was like, there has to be something that I'm missing. Like there's got to be something that these coaches are doing that I'm missing. If you can be so consistent on the four vital behaviors, which are being proof the product works, Okay, so eat healthy, guys. Work out. Share that lifestyle on social media. Be drinking your Shakeology. Be drinking your Energize. Be drinking water. You know, sharing the lifestyle on social media every single day and, and really practicing what you preach, first and foremost, you guys. The number two one is personal development. Um, you're going to have people say no to you. You're going to have moments where you doubt yourself and you can be successful in this business. You've got to control your mindset through personal development. Um, the third is inviting. That's the most uncomfortable thing for new coaches. But when you truly believe in the fact that you can help other people and that you know your job is not to convince people, but to show them that this opportunity is out there, then you can embrace it, right? And it's fun to invite people knowing that I have this beautiful gift, okay? I've wrapped this gift up in a little, you know, package with a bow and all of this beautiful stuff, you know, in order to give people um, a healthy lifestyle. Here you go. Here's this gift. Hey, James. But it's their, it's their choice whether or not they actually have it, right? Um, so the other thing with that, you guys, is that you know, the fourth one is recognition, which as a, as a baby coach at the beginning, guys, it can be hard um, to find people to recognize. But that's when you use the before and afters from the test groups, you know, or the fact that Brittany Wright and our team group shared her transformation so far um, four months postpartum with 2B Mindset, which was mind blowing. Um, or the fact that, who else did I just see? Rachel Peterson on our team, who was also postpartum. I think she, her baby's like six or seven months at this point. Um, no, actually close to eight. But she shared her transformation. When you see our, our fellow coaches sharing their transformations, you can share those, you guys. When you see, you know, people who have gone through the test groups with Lift 4 or 2B Mindset or any of the programs, share those, you guys. Recognize those people because the people following you are watching you, okay? And they're looking at the results that not only you're getting, but the people around you. 
okay? It's proof the products work. Um, so staying consistent with those things, you guys, and keeping them super sim simple. Don't overcomplicate it. When you look at your schedule, I want you to say, okay, how can I fit this stuff in? Um, and that's the other thing that I want to talk about, number two, you guys, is that it doesn't have to all happen at once. I remember when I first had Tenley, okay? So she was baby girl and we were not sleeping through the night and it was like, okay, I have to work through power pockets. And that's what I call them, they're power pockets, where it's like, okay, if Tenley is taking her power nap, which at that time it was like 15, 20 minute naps throughout the day, um, as a newborn, I would say, okay, I have 15 minutes to sit down and invite as many people as I possibly can. And then when she needed me, I had to stop. But I had that to-do list that you guys all have at this point. If not, make sure you let me know that you don't have the new coach checklist. Uh, but I looked at that checklist and said, what can I fit in at what that certain time of day? When can I fit my workout in? You know, you never want to sacrifice your workout time to be able to work your business because you're a health and fitness coach, right? You have to practice what you preach. Um, I see some coaches that say like, well, I really need to message these people. You need to get your, your, your stuff done first, right? You've got to take care of your body first and foremost. Um, so make sure that you look at your schedule and you say, okay, how can I fit this in? So for me, even before I had Tenley, when I was working full time, you guys, and I was working as Janelle's assistant and I was going to school full time for my master's, I would wake up in the morning before I had any thing to do and I'd get my workout done okay so I'd get my workout done first and foremost I think it was like five o'clock in the morning I would get my workout in and then after that I would say okay I have you know an hour before I have to be into work um, shower real quick and then sit down and get as much as I possibly could get done before I walked into the office. And then after that, I would say, okay, at lunchtime, not the healthiest thing in the world to do this, but I would work over my computer, you guys. I would be responding back to people while I was eating my lunch and my customers would learn, okay, and I've had them tell me this actually, I know that Meg responds between 12 and 2 um, every single day. So if I have a question for her, I'm going to respond back to her as soon as she messages me at that time. And they kind of learned my hours, you guys, which is a big part of this business as well. Um, after that, I would get home from work and I would work my business more. I would get on team calls or do trainings for you guys. Um, I would just make it fit into my schedule, you guys. So if you are like looking at the business and you're like, how can I fit this in? There are power pockets in your day. There are times where you're either sitting and scrolling your newsfeed, right? Um, that's a huge time sucker. Do not do it if you're supposed to be working, okay? That's like my, my um, dessert to myself at the end of the day when I've gotten everything done. I go and I like go through Instagram stories and the news feed and all that kind of stuff. So um, we all have things that are sucking up our time. Or when you're driving to work or you're dropping off your kids or you're getting ready in the morning, that's when you should be doing your personal development listening to Audible, right? You're double, doubling up on something. Um, when you are sitting down to eat lunch, you know, grabbing your phone and inviting people through your phone as you're eating. It's not the healthiest thing, okay? But when you are like time crunched, you gotta fit it in, you guys. Um, so I want you guys to look and I wanna encourage you before I go through my other tips to after we get off this Zoom, I want you to go through your schedule. Okay, so today is Tuesday, so from now until Monday, okay, a whole week, and say, where can I find either 15, 20 minute increments throughout the day that add up to an hour or a straight hour that I can get the stuff done? Okay, yes. Um, and as much as I want to say that, you know, the workouts are our business, it is, but that should not be the actual time that you're sitting down, right? Does that make sense, you guys? Like your, your workout has to fit into your day, but if you're planning an hour to work, your workout shouldn't be that entire day, right? Or the entire hour of the work. If you are saying, I have an hour to work and you spend 40 minutes working out and then you're like, okay, so I'll listen to personal development for, to personal development for 20 minutes. When are you inviting? When are you posting on social media? When are you building relationships with people? Those are the actions that actually build the business, you guys. The personal development has to happen and the workouts have to happen because you have to be, um, people have to trust you and you have to show that you're getting results, but the actual actions that move it forward are all relationship building, you guys, right? Connecting with each other. Um, the other thing that I think is really important, you guys, is making sure that you're not afraid to ask for help. I am horrible at asking for help. 
horrible, you guys. Like it's so hard for me to ask for help. Um, I will drive myself insane trying to do everything for everyone before I ask for help. And luckily I have a husband that will just step in and do it. And then I'm like, oh, thank you. You know, that was so great that you helped out. I probably would have never asked you. Like he's just learned to step in and like force me to ask, ask him for help. Um, but I want to tell you guys, you can't be everything to everyone. Okay, so if you're trying to do the laundry and you're trying to do dinner and you're trying to do bedtime and you're trying to do bath time and you're trying to work your business and you're trying to like do all of this stuff, you guys, that's not possible for one person. You're going to go insane. I'll be honest. There's days where I don't do my laundry. Okay, like if you looked in my laundry room right now, you'd probably cry because there's laundry everywhere, you know, because I'm like, okay, I'll get to it when I have a free moment. But my priorities are making sure that my business work is getting done and that my family time is getting done, right? And then at a moment where I have both of those covered, then I can do the, the laundry and the dishes and all that kind of stuff, okay? So ask for help, you guys. Um, ask from, you know, a friend, a parent, um, a sibling, um, a spouse, whoever you can ask for help, okay? Uh, if you have a kid old enough to be able to do chores, ask them to help you, okay, so that you can build this business. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for help. Priorities. This business has to be one of those top priorities. You will never hear me say, put this business in front of your family. It'll never happen because that's not the way that I run my business and that's not the way that I expect you guys to run your business. But pick the things that you're okay with giving up. So for a lot of you guys have probably heard me say this, with Tenley, I have to do bath time, like that's my jam, and bedtime. Like, those are my things. I don't want anyone else doing bath time or bedtime. That's my time with Tenley, okay? As well as dinner. I'm not going to work with my phone over dinner. Now, I've talked to some other coaches who say, at dinner time, we have the TV on. So, like, we're not really conversing, which I have no judgment. Um, so, I'm just going to work on my phone while we eat dinner. And I'm like, that's fine. If you're okay with sacrificing that family time during dinner, that's fine. Okay, but they might say, okay, during bedtime or whatever, I'm not working my business. So figure out the things that you're willing to sacrifice, you guys. Or Netflix. How much, how much TV do we watch, you guys? I'll be honest, I watch a lot of TV because my brain never stops. Kirk has to literally tell me, stop talking. Because I'll be like, what do you think about this? What do you want to think about that? And we'll be like, you know, he's like, stop. Like, just stop. So the only way I can turn my brain off literally you guys is to watch tv uh, i know it's so bad but it's so true so um what i do is i say okay at night time it's usually night time that we sit down and we we hang out and watch a little bit of tv before bed and unwind but on tuesday nights i'm sacrificing and you know a half hour hour of the time that we usually sit down to work to do a call for you guys or to do a call for another team or to sit down and do some some work you know inviting things that i wasn't able to get to so look at the things that you could sacrifice no it doesn't have to be every night you guys you don't have to say every single night i can't watch tv with my spouse or i can't do this or that figure out the things that you're willing to sacrifice Okay. Um, the next thing you guys is, like I said, the time suckers. Um, I want you to make a list when you're, you're going throughout your day. And I, I suggest doing this tomorrow. Think of those time suckers. What are the things that you're doing that are really not moving you forward in your health goals or your fit or your uh, business goals? Okay. Newsfeed. It's really not a good idea to go into your newsfeed. A lot of people, um, there's like an app that you can get that's called like kill your newsfeed. So if you're working from your laptop, I don't know if it works on your phone or not. I would think it would work on your phone. Uh, but there's this thing, if you Google and you just say Google kill newsfeed, it will literally disappear your newsfeed. So when you hop on, if that's one of your issues that you're like, Ooh, what's she posting about? What's she posting? And then you're like 30 minutes later, you're like, Oh my God, I was supposed to message all these people. <laughs> I didn't do anything. If you need that, you guys shut down the newsfeed. However, my upline taught me, I remember she says, as soon as she hops on, because of course Facebook pops up your newsfeed as soon as you hop on, right? She says she responds to the first post at the top of her newsfeed, and this is what I do as well. Um, so the first thing that pops up, she will comment and like, and that triggers her brain to say, okay, now it's time to get busy. So for me, I started that at the beginning of my business. I said, I will comment and like on the first post that pops up at the top of my newsfeed, and then I have to work. And once I get through all of my work, then I can go onto the newsfeed and look through people's stuff. I also have been able to train myself, and you, you have to get into this, this habit first, you guys. It's going to feel weird at first, that every time I hop into the newsfeed, 
if I'm like doing work and all of a sudden, you know, I'm like a squirrel and I'm like, oh, what's that notification? Because Facebook will not turn notifications off. Um, and I'm like, whoa, like what, who just commented on something? And I start getting kind of like going down that, that bunny, um, what do they say? The bunny hole or rabbit hole. I get up and I walk around. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I need to either go get some water or I need to go to the bathroom or you just take a lap around the house and then come back down. Cause they say that getting a little bit of movement in your body can help focus your brain. Okay. Um, so make sure that you are looking at the things that are sucking up your time that are not moving you forward. Another thing to help you guys with time management is if you're someone who it takes you a while to get focused, set a timer. Okay. So turn on your phone, set out a timer and say, okay, so I have 15 minutes to get as much as I possibly can get done. And you set that timer. You better believe most people will be like, oh gosh, I got to get down to work. Right. And you keep seeing your timer go down and down. You're like, okay, I only have 15 minutes. I have to get as much as I possibly can get done. Um, it doesn't give you time to mess around. I will tell you on the days when I have my babysitter and I know she's here for six hours. I'm like, Oh, I can take my time to do as much as I possibly can do. And then on days where like, I know Kirk's here and maybe I don't have as much time. I get so much more done <laughs> when Kirk's here, when I'm like, okay, I'm racing against the clock. So I'm able to either hang out with them or we have an errand we have to run or something like that. Um, so it's not always better to have more time. You guys, I have found that my coaches who are the busiest are the most successful because when you have a ton of free time, it, you have too much time to like slack. Okay, but when you have less time, you know when you sit down, you gotta get the work done, right? Um, two more things, you guys. The next thing is that when you're not working, okay, and please hear me, hear me with this, okay? Your family, like I said before, first and foremost, is the most important thing, okay? And what I find happens to too many coaches when you start building this business is that it becomes your entire life. Okay. And when you have your phone with you, it's very hard to turn off. I also have an Apple watch. Okay. So that's really hard for me to turn off. Um, so what I do is I turn my notifications off on my phone when I'm with Kirk and Tenley. I also put it on silent. Okay. And I put it in a drawer. And so I know when I'm with Kirk and Tenley, I am focused. I am with them. That's why if you guys text me and you don't hear back right away, it's because I literally have my phone in a drawer <laughs> and this is turned off. Okay. And I had to learn that the hard way, you guys. I had to learn it, learn it the hard way when Kirk and Tenley and I would be supposed to be having family time. I would be on my phone. Okay. Or Kirk and I would be making dinner and I would be hopping on my computer or hopping on my phone and responding back to messages. And we had to have a very long, hard talk where he said, you have, you have to have that boundary, Megan, because it's, it's messing with us. Um, and your family doesn't deserve that, right? They deserve to have you present. Not only that, you guys, you deserve that. You deserve to have that present time with your family. Um, Beachbody is meant to give you a life, not be your entire life. Okay. The other part of that is that your customers and your coaches, as you build your team, they're going to respect you so much more when they can't get a hold of you 24 seven. I used to do it all wrong. Okay. I used to have it where the minute that a coach would uh, message me or a customer would message me, I would be responding back. So that on the days when I had something going on and I wasn't responding back right away, people get mad at you, right? You teach people how to treat you. So if you're responding back immediately all the time, and then you have a day when you're not responding back as fast, they might get mad at you. You don't want that. You want to be able to give yourself that flexibility to say, okay, I need some, some um, boundaries. Okay, so make sure that when you're with your family, you're being present. Um, the last thing, you guys, is that if you have a spouse, I want you to talk openly with them about this business. If they don't know what it's about and they think you're just working on your phone or you're just playing on Facebook or you're just looking through Instagram and they don't actually understand what you're doing, the fact that, you know, building relationships does mean that you're on Instagram and Facebook at this point with this business, um, that, can, that can cause a pretty big rift in the, in the relationship be open with them about what it takes to do this business um, and the hours that you're looking and the fact that maybe you need them to pick up some slack. You have to be open about, about it, you guys. When Kirk and I first started dating back in 2011, this was my, my jam, okay? And, and not a lot of people know this, but you know, I had first started really building my business and you know, I was getting ready to quit my full-time job um, at the YMCA and I was working a lot. 
Okay. And I was not open with him about what I was doing. And luckily he's a nice guy, right? So he gave me that time and freedom, but we broke up for a couple weeks. Um, at the end of 2011 and when we were getting back together he said I don't know if I can be with such a, a, a business driven woman right like he's like I didn't know and don't judge her or right? he was like you're just on your business doing your business so often like we don't have a relationship and I had to be at that point very open with him about what it takes to be successful in this business no you don't have to spend 12 hours you guys I don't want to scare you thinking that you have to spend 12 hours a day or even more than that building this business. But you do have to have that focus time every single day to build those relationships, to share with people, because people are watching it every moment, especially when you're a brand new coach, you guys. You're, you're um, showing people what they can get from you. So when you're consistently showing up, they're seeing that you're the kind of coach that they want, right? Because they, they crave that consistency in their life. Now, if your spouse doesn't know that stuff, they're gonna get really annoyed when you're hopping on your computer every single night, right? You need to openly say, hey, you know what? Don't tell them that I said this. No, you can say that I said this. I have to sacrifice some of our Netflix time or some of our Bachelor in Paradise time or whatever you guys watch um, every single night in order to build the business because that's the only free time I have, okay? And I will compromise and maybe Friday night, you don't work, okay? You can go on date night or something like that. I don't know. Um, but just be open, you guys. If I had Kirk on here, which I wish I could, he would tell you that that is so important because not only is that going to make it easier on you because your spouse is going to know what you're doing, right? They're not going to be like, why are you disappearing at night? Um, but they're going to step up and help you more, okay? Um, any questions on time management, you guys? You all look like, ooh. <laughs> The thing that I think a lot of coaches, and feel free to ask questions, guys, type them on the side, and I'll just keep talking for a second. Um, but the thing with time, time management as a brand new coach, you guys, is that, like I said, you don't need a ton of time. At this point, you know, I see Sarah in here who's got a couple coaches, and I know Kristen has a couple coaches. Um, but at the beginning, you guys, you could just spend a majority of your time on your business, right? Like building relationships in your, uh, for your clients and your future clients and talking to people about coaching and being what we call phase one, which is all the four vital behaviors just focused on your business. So you can get everything done within an hour, hour or two hours, depending on what your goals are. Then as your team grows, that's when you have to put a little more time and effort into the team side of it. Okay, so this time, you guys, you shouldn't be freaking out thinking that you need to spend five or six hours a day uh, until you start building a team and you start getting to those you know, higher ranks and stuff like that and, and spending time with your team. So don't freak out and think that I'm saying that you have to work like all day, okay? All right. Questions? Any questions? Yes, no. Yes, no. Okay, I know it's one of those topics that's pretty straightforward, you guys, but I do want to give you guys some call to actions in that message thread, you guys. So in the business starter group, I want you to go in there and don't be nervous to do this. I know it's uncomfortable as a brand new coach. Just do it, you guys. But I want you to look at your schedule from I guess we could do Wednesday. Wednesday until next Tuesday. I know I said Monday before. Um, but Wednesday until next Tuesday, so you'd start tomorrow. And I want you to block out where you can fit an hour in, okay? So is it 15 minutes in the morning before your kid gets up? And then 30 minutes when your kid's eating lunch? And then 15 minutes at bedtime, um, right after they go to bed, you're sitting down and you're just finishing up a couple things? Or are you able to get an hour done in the morning? You know, a lot of coaches like to just get it all done in the morning. Um, I see my coach, Brittany Wright, Right, get up before her four kids um, at like five o'clock in the morning you guys and she gets as much as she can get done and then she might be able to do some more later in the day maybe not okay and she's one of my higher coaches so figure out an hour you guys where can I fit in an hour and I want you to put it in the um, message thread on Facebook from Wednesday to Tuesday Okay, so go in there, and for those of you that do it, I will be doing a fun little drawing where I will be sending you a performance pack sampler so you can try out Energize and Hydrate and Recovery and all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Lori's like, yes, it's so good, you guys. Um, but I'm going to send it, and I'm going to pick someone who puts their hours in there, okay? That's the first thing that I want you to do. The other thing, and you don't have to share this, but this is for your own personal thing, you guys, is I want you to make sure that you are um, making – Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. I want to make sure that you're talking to, if you have a spouse, your spouse about your goals. You have to have that conversation. You have to have it, you guys. 
I know it's going to be uncomfortable at first, but until they understand what you're doing, they can't be supportive. Okay. So make sure that you're having that conversation. So guys, thank you so much for hopping on. Usually it's going to be a short,